The storyteller has no choice. Soon you will not hear his voice. His job is to shed light and not to master. Dun, 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 dun. You'll see why if you watch the video to the end. Hey, VC. It's Dr. Robert. I'm out here in the Columbia River Gorge um, in my record room. I've been kind of uh, reshaping things a little, moving some stuff around. Uh, we don't need to get into that. But um, it's nighttime out here, which is the first time I've made a video at night. You can see it's pretty dang dark out there. Bella is still kicking around here with me. But... Um, it's not late, it's just dark. And um, had an idea for a, uh, for a video today that I just wanted to show, and it's kinda, I don't know, Let's see what you think. Uh, maybe it's interesting, maybe it's not, I don't know. So the theme is uh, promo records that differ from the non-promo versions. And I will say, I, I like uh, promo records. So when I find one, I like to buy it. If it's something that I don't have, or even if it's something I do have uh, that I still would like another copy, I will buy a promo copy to put with my standard copy. Um, there are enough variants there, you know, for me to want that as a collector, even though it's a duplicate of the actual rep record. But then there are promo records that are not duplicates. There are promo records that differ from the uh, commercial version. And in that case, I really like to get them. <laughs> and so uh, I'm gonna go through a few reasons because there's, there's not, that, that's definitely the minority of promo records. And it, as always, I'll be interested in your comments, anybody that wants to add examples, but also add you know examples of records for, for sure, but also examples of reasons. And I'm just gonna give a few sort of, scattered reasons that record companies have made promo copies variant from the commercial uh, pressing. So first one I'm gonna show is this one, uh, Who Are You by The Who. Uh, this record came out uh, just before I finished high school, 1978. And uh, great record, uh, there's the white label promo. And uh, you know, the, the the thing about this was the main hit from it, Who Are You, has a line where Roger Daltrey says, Who the F are you? And radio stations aren't, at that time, weren't going to play that. So what you got was this. This is edited for airplay. And that's far from unusual. There are other, um, other examples of that. And please throw some in. Um, I, you know, none are coming to the top of my head right now, but definitely that's not an infrequent uh, reason, right? And uh, that was the reason back in the day that, uh, that the Who's record got sent out with uh, an alternate copy. Another one, and this is actually one I don't have and I am looking for, and this, I, I pulled this out just because it's another Who record. So every time I'm in a record store, I am looking in the Who bin for the promo copy of this record. And this record, um, you know, the Who Sell Out, uh, it's not really one of their best. I don't think it's one of their best. It's it's still, it's a Who record, and it's from the, you know, late 60s, I guess 67 or so this came out. And um, this has, um, uh, this had those fake commercials embedded in the original in the original vinyl. And uh, they wanted to not confuse DJs, I guess. So as I understand it, not owning a copy, the uh, promo copy of this record had all of those uh, advertisements collected in the, um, you know, at the beginning of the both sides or maybe one side so that as a DJ, you could skip over those. By the way, if anybody has a copy that they're ready to dispose of, of the promo version of this record. I've been looking for a long time and uh, it seems to be quite rare. Uh, that's a nice commercial copy, but uh, I've never owned uh, and I'm still seeking that promo copy. Uh, here's one more. This is another reason. Um, sometimes it's about 
uh, creating a record that uh, is uh, that includes uh, includes more than just music. So here is um, you, know, you can't tell by the cover here. This is the Pretenders uh, Get Close record, and uh, Warner Brothers put out a series of these. The the uh, music show. Uh, Warner Brothers Music Show uh, promotional records all had the same, actually the same cover, uh, and uh, this was that Pretenders record. Um, and these include not only the most of the songs, and they, and they kind of they, they shorten some of the songs, but uh, includes commentary by the performers, uh, in this case by Chrissy Hind, uh, about the record. So it includes some interesting dialogue as well as uh, the songs themselves that creates the possibility of, you know, sort of expanding uh, the interest in the audience. Here's a commercial copy of the same record. And like pretty much all of the Pretenders records, a uh, great uh, record and one I'm delighted to have. This was after the band had changed a bit, um, but still Chrissy Hind uh, she's given us so much over the years. Um, one more kind of in that same theme I'll show. Uh, that's this one. Uh, this is actually a, uh, you know, a, a commercial version of the soundtrack to Animal House. And this, in, you know, Animal House, the soundtrack doesn't have that many songs, at least not that many original songs, right? It's got the uh, theme to Animal House. And it's got, uh, you know, some songs, actually, uh, Robert Cray was in the band that was down at the hop uh, during the uh, co toga party uh, scene, I guess. Everybody knows that, right? Uh, everybody should. Uh, at any rate, this includes, uh, as you can see, an interview with John Belushi. So uh, again, here, uh, the point of the difference between this and the commercial recording is to uh, is to promote the record, promote the movie in this case. So the first one, the Pretenders, it's to promote the record. Here's something to promote really the movie uh, more than uh, purchase of the record because that, that's not where they made their bucks. I'm gonna pause. It's a nice rye whiskey. <coughs> yeah, no, it's good. So there's yet another reason. Here's an interesting one I came across more recently. And this, these are some records. I, I bought a couple of records by this guy, and I really don't even know this guy. I bought both of these on spec, as we say, without knowing the performer or what the music sounds like. And you can see he's, uh, this is a disco record. And th this one was interesting. If you look here, the, uh, the they pressed it not for radio DJs, but for uh, DJs at discotheques. And the interesting thing about this, this is a standard cover, and uh, it was it was put out as a 12 inch, 33 and a third RPM record uh, in a single format. Uh, but this promo format for the discotheque DJs back in the day is 45 RPM and has uh, two uh, two discs instead of just one, uh, which you know nowadays, of course, they're doing that frequently, but not in a promo setting. But this is 1979, so that was the start of kind of uh, pressings made specifically for DJs. Of course, what they continued with are singles on a 12-inch format uh, in uh, 45 RPM. And then last, the last reason that sometimes things were variant was uh, that there were songs on the original that maybe were too long uh, and were not separated. And so an example of that, the bands of the song Terrapin Station on the Grateful Dead record titled Terrapin Station. And by the way, I think this is one of the Grateful Dead's best records. You know, I mean, everybody talks about Working Man's Dead and American Beauty. Granted, great records. I, I would put this maybe my third on the same list of favorites by the Grateful Dead. And, and I love Terrapin Station. I also love Estimated Profit. 
Samson and Delilah, Passenger, man, just some great songs on here. This is kind of, it was got a lot of input from Bobby Weir, obviously. Uh, I think those three songs were all his. And then uh, Dancing in the Streets and uh, Sunrise comprised the first side, but then Terrapin Station, you know, Lady with a Fan. I mean, great lyric. That's Jerry's side. And, you know, uh, the storyteller, uh, what is it? The storyteller uh, is, you know, will lose his voice. His intention is to, um, what is it? It's something and not to, <laughs> not to badger. Eh, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it. But uh, the storyteller fades out and they go into an extended jam. And that song, you know, 20 minutes, and, you know, people talk about it as sort of the Grateful Dead's moment of, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, prog rock as opposed to other things. It's definitely progressive jazz music. And um, this version, though, the promotional version, separates the bands of that song uh, into separate sections. So if you're a DJ, you can find uh, the uh, song you want to play. You don't have to play the whole thing. And of course, you're not going to find a section uh, without some kind of a separation. So they create a visible separation, I'll say. Um, storyteller, soon you will not hear his voice, his I don't know. It's profound, and I love it. Um, I'm not quite coming up with the words. Somebody put that in the in the messages, and I'll respond. It's one of the one of their best songs, in my opinion. Another one in that same vein: Vandergraaff Generator, uh, world record. And this is another one, you know. And of course, Vandergraaff is a prog band, and or was a prog band. And uh, this this record. Uh, had um, uh, had another uh, long side that was not banded, and uh, they separated it out on the promotional copy. And uh, you can see down here that that's what that says, separated out. I've got a couple other examples of that. Uh, Rick Wakeman album, uh, Roger Waters album. There may be others. Um, but I think that's kind of another interesting reason that sometimes a promo record came out in a different format. So that's what I got. Tell me what you think. And somebody come up with frickin' lyrics to Lady with a Fan. I'm dying. All right. Until then, the doctor is out.